This video is going to discuss adding fractions. So we're going to start out with our symbolic fraction, our A over B plus C over D. Well, you'll notice we don't have a common denominator here. We have B's and we have D's, and they don't have anything in common. So what do we need to do? We need to come up with a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be the smallest thing that both factors or denominators will go into. So that common denominator is going to be B times D. So now we need to modify both of our fractions so that they have that common denominator of B times D. Well, one good way of doing that would be to multiply the first one by the factor that is missing. So when we multiply this factor, or this fraction, excuse me, by D over D, we're really just multiplying by 1, because D divided by D is just 1, and we don't really change the value of the fraction, we're simply changing the way that it's written. Our second fraction needs to be multiplied by B over B, so now we're going to have A times D plus B times C over the common denominator BD. So that's our symbolic representation. So let's do an example where we already have a common denominator. So example number one, let's add one-third plus four-thirds. Well, we already have our common denominator of three, so we're basically going to be adding those numerators over our common denominator, so that gives us five thirds. Let's do another one with a common denominator. If we take 3 eighths and we add 5 eighths, we're going to be adding 3 plus 5 over our common denominator of 8, which gives us 8 over 8, which is of course 1. Let's do another one where we have a common denominator, and let's raise the bar even further by having three fractions that we're adding together. So let's add together one-fourth plus three-fourths plus another three-fourths. Well, since we have that common denominator of four, we're basically just adding one plus three plus three over the common denominator, which gives us seven over four or seven-fourths. Let's do uh, one more with a common denominator. So if we take one-eighth plus three-eighths, we have one of something plus three of something gives us four of those somethings. So that gives us four-eighths. And four-eighths will reduce. So we can say that four goes into four once and into eight two times. So four parts out of 8 reduces to 1 half. Now let's take an example where we don't have our common denominator already. So let's do 4 fifths plus 3 tenths. So we're asking ourselves at this point, what is the smallest value that both 5 and 10 will go into evenly? And that of course is going to be 10. Well, this fraction already has the common denominator. This fraction does not, so we need to multiply 4 fifths by 2 over 2 and transform that into 8 tenths plus 3 tenths. So we add the two numerators together and that gives us 11 tenths. So once we get our common denominator, it's smooth sailing. So let's do another one. So let's add one-half plus three-eighths. Well, here again, the second fraction already has the least common denominator of eight. Eight is the smallest number that both two and four will go into evenly. So we need to take our first fraction and multiply it by four over four. So that gives us four over eight plus 3 over 8, 
So 4 plus 3 is 7 over the common denominator 8. So our answer is 7 eighths, and you'll notice the 7 eighths is irreducible. So let's take a look at 2 over 7 plus 5 over 8. Well, in this case, the smallest thing that both 7 and 8 will go into evenly is going to be 56. So I need to multiply my first fraction by 8 over 8, and my second fraction by 7 over 7. So now I'll have 16 over 56 plus 35 over 56. So adding my two numerators, I'm going to get 51 over 56. So once we get our common denominator, it's pretty much smooth sailing afterwards. So our next fraction is going to be 5 over 12, or 5 twelfths, plus 5 thirty seconds. So now we've got a little bit harder fraction, or fractions to work with rather, so we need to factor these two uh, denominators. So when we do a prime factorization of 12, we're going to get 2 times 2, times 3. And when we factor 32, we're going to get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 32 is 2 to the fifth power. So our least common denominator is going to need every factor contained in the two fractions to the greatest number of times it's used in any one of them. So our least common denominator is going to have to have a 2, and it's going to have to have a 3. So how many 2's does it need? Well, it's going to need 5, because 5 30 seconds is 2 to the 5th. Okay. So 2 to the 5th, which is 32, times 3 is 96. So 96, then, is the smallest value that both the 12 and 32 will go into evenly. So how, do I mul so how do I modify the fractions that I have? Well, I happen to know that 8 times 12 is 96, so I need to multiply my first fraction by 8 over 8, and my second fraction by 3 over 3. So 8 times 5 is 40, plus 5 times 3 is 15. So now that we have our common denominator, we simply add the numerators over our common denominator. So that's going to give us 55 over 96, which looks like it's irreducible. So let's clean that up. before we do our next one. Okay, so let's try 1 over 39 plus 6 over 22. Well, here again we have a couple of awful looking denominators, so let's do a prime factorization of these denominators. So 39 is going to equal 3 times 13 and 22 is going to equal 2 times 11. So my least common denominator is going to have 3 times 13 times 2 times 11, because those are unique factors. So that means my 1 over 39 needs to be multiplied by 
2 times 11, which is 22. And my 22 needs to be multiplied by 39 over 39. Okay. So 22 times 1 is 22 plus 6 times 39. Let's do a little bit of quick arithmetic here. So 22 plus 234 is 256. So we're going to have 256 over 22 times 39. So once again, I'll have to do a little quick arithmetic here. Okay, so I get 256 over 858. Well, obviously these are both even numbers, so it looks like I'm going to probably need to factor out a 2 out of the bottom and the top. So if I reduce the bottom by 2, I'm going to get 429. And then the top, I'll get 128. Okay. So that looks like that's pretty much done. So that was a pretty much a tough one. Let's free up a little bit more workspace here. So now let's try three fractions. So let's do one third plus three eighths plus three sixteenths. So once again, let's go ahead and factor our denominators. Well, the first one obviously is factored. The second one, though, is going to be two times two times two, so that's two to the third. And then 16 is going to be 2 times 8. Well, if 8 is 2 to the 3rd, then 16 must be 2 to the 4th. So our least common denominator, then, is going to have to be 3 times 2 to the 4th. Remember, we need every factor to the greatest number of times it's used in any denominator. So our first fraction, our 1 3rd, has to be multiplied by 16 over 16. Then our second fraction has 2 to the third, but it needs another 2 and it needs a 3, so it needs to be multiplied by 6 over 6. Okay. Then our final fraction already has the 2 to the fourth, so it just simply needs a 3, so we need to multiply that by 3 over 3. So we're going to wind up with 16 times 1 is 16. Then 3 times 6 is 18. Then 3 times 3 is 9. So when we add these numbers together, 16 plus 18 is 34. Plus 9 is 43. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 16, which is 48. So our answer will be 43 divided by 48.